Hello, I'm Congressman Tony Cardenas, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Law and Mental Health Conference. This year's topic, Alternatives to Police, is so timely and relevant. With everything that's happened in the last few years, many of us agree that armed law enforcement officers are often not the best equipped to respond to a person in crisis. In fact, the majority of Americans are afraid of what might happen to them or their loved ones if they call 911 during a mental health emergency. And it's armed law enforcement officers who show up is what makes people nervous. Repeating reports on TV and in the newspaper show that these fears aren't unfounded. And we now know that a police encounter with a civilian is 16 times more likely to result in that person's death if they have an untreated mental illness. Let me be clear. Being mentally ill is not a crime. Being suicidal is not a crime. Having a substance abuse disorder is not a crime. Unfortunately, police officers have become the first responders we default to for mental health emergencies, increasing the risk of a bad outcome, sometimes with tragic results. So the question many have been asking is this, well, what do we do instead? In a poll conducted a few months ago by the National Alliance on Mental Illness, more than 80% of Americans believe mental health professionals should be the primary first responders for a mental health crisis. In 2019, Congress recognized the importance of mental health and approved 988 as a national calling code for mental health emergencies. 988 goes into effect in July of this year and will provide Americans with much needed access to emergency assistance during a mental health crisis. But more work needs to be done for 988 to truly be able to serve as an alternative to police and 911 for situations where law enforcement isn't needed. Just a new number is not enough. Evidence shows us that in order to be truly effective, crisis services must operate in a linked fashion. There must be someone to call, someone to come to your aid, and somewhere to go if you need it. For example, if you have a medical emergency, such as a stroke or a heart attack, you have someone to call, 911. And then there's someone to come that's trained and equipped for the job an ambulance with EMTs and paramedics. And if needed, there's somewhere to go, like a hospital or emergency room where you can get additional care. Experts across the country have worked to define how to effectively respond to mental health crisis. And more guidance on this has been released in the past few years. We frankly know more today than we did in the past. In Los Angeles County, many county stakeholders and departments, including the LA Department of Mental Health and the LA County Sheriff's Department, are working together to make sure that armed officers are only triaged to respond to the highest risk situations. This triage is important as almost all mental health crisis calls can be safely handled by clinical specialists. And police backup is needed in less than 5% of the cases when clinical teams are dispatched first. Additionally, studies show that these teams are better at getting folks in need connected to the right resources and services so the crisis doesn't repeat again. This has terrific potential, but many states are now attempting to implement these services but are struggling to do so without federal support. That's why I'm introducing the Bipartisan 988 Implementation Act. This bill provides federal support, guidance, and funding for states to enact 988 and ensure that it's not just the number you call, but a resource to connect you to services on the ground, including trained first responders and crisis centers. Together, we can work towards a future where mental health isn't seen as something criminal, but instead, depending on the situation, as an opportunity to intervene with health, mental health, or social service specialists. My hope is that folks in need, anytime and anywhere, can call 988 and that when they do, they'll find the support they need, whether it's someone to call, someone to come to your aid, or somewhere to go. Thank you all for your attention today and all the work that you do every day across the country to make every situation better. 
and to bring the badly needed services to those who need it the most. I hope that you all enjoy this great conference. And once again, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of it.